only one issue this time, as, well, the next couple issues are a little sub-story arc. This whole thing with Abattoir, is we're going to start kicking off this time, is broken into a bunch of sub-story arcs, so we'll be dividing those accordingly. And this one is a little more horror-adjacent, as we cover Batman issue 505. This issue was written by Doug Mensch, with pencils by Mike Manley, inks by Bob Wiacek, colors by Adrian Roy, letters by Ken Brusniak, and is edited by the legendary Denny O'Neill and by Jordan B. Gorfinkel. We open on Asbat, looking over the scene of a quintuple homicide, a family that was shot and then flayed. Asbat's investigation, which he's in the process of doing before the police arrive, is interrupted by, not the police or the killer, but by the ghosts of Jean-Paul's father as Asriel and St. Dumas getting into a sword fight basically over why is Asbat doing this. St. Dumas wins with the ghost of Jean-Paul's father crying for vengeance. Asbat recovers from this right before the police arrive, so Asbat doesn't have time to finish his investigation and instead is limited to grabbing a piece of mail to identify the family, the Etchisons. Which means that our villain is Abattoir, who we find in a tomb sucking on the bones of his dead relatives. That is spectacularly edgelordy. In the Batcave, Jean-Paul angst on having neglected the human part of being Batman before researching the victims and finding the connection to Abattoir. Abattoir now only has one main family member left that he can get at, Graham Etchison. Graham's father, Henry, is currently in Blackgate for previously trying to hire an assassin to kill Abattoir before Abattoir could kill him. We then go to Graham, who was in the middle of accepting a grant from the Wayne Foundation before going to take some orphans on a camping trip. Presumably this is something that Bruce would be involved in handing out the uh, grant, but, well, Bruce isn't there, and John Paul has no interest in this part of the Batman life, so it's that. Asbat rushes to intercept and basically monitor uh, Graham as Abattoir gets to the bus company before Edison arrives, kills the bus driver, and takes his place just as it starts to snow. As Abattoir picks up Graham and the orphans, they comment on the ensuing snow as they pile out of the bus. Now, um, unless you are staying in a cabin or some yurts, why are you still going on this camping trip? Because it's snowing. That creates a safety issue. Beyond, your bus driver has been murdered and replaced with a serial killer. Partway through the trip, Abattoir goes to kill Graham, only for Asbat to arrive and yank Abattoir to the roof of the bus, leaving no one to drive the thing, forcing Graham to take the wheel. However, Graham does not have his CDL, and he nearly losing control of the bus, almost causing it to hurtle off a cliff. <laughs> I'm in danger! The bus stops with the front tires over the edge, and Abattoir takes this opportunity to escape, while Batman stabilizes the bus using a new nearby tree and some bat line. Afterwards, Graham thanks Asbat before Asbat leaves, and also the kids think Asbat's bat costume is really cool. Which, I get it, it is the 90s, it is a cool costume. Later that night, Jean-Paul makes some further modifications to the costume as the issue ends. On the one hand, this is a good reintroduction to Abattoir. He is a villain who I only know in context of Nightfall, that having read the junior novelization when I was in middle school. And so, consequently, if you'd only known him from like the, I recall correctly, he only appeared in like a... Legend of the Dark Knight story before this. Um, so having this quick bring you back up to speed is great. It gives you his concept, what his deal is, and that he's still floating around in the wind. Doesn't necessarily set up quite totally quite yet that he's going to be um, the main linchpin of the climax of the crusade. But 
that we get to reintroduce to him and the that oh he's he's gonna show up again. He's in the wind. That said, wow, this is really gore am edgelordy, even for the nineties. Like the concept of I'm trying to kill every living member of my family tree gimmick. It works. They kept that in the junior novelization, which was aimed at late middle school grade readers. So they, they, they kept them there. They bought that. It worked um, it, just fine. Sucking the marrow from the bones of the dead, the dead for a while. E Um, I understand that that's the reaction they're trying to get, but you didn't have to go that far. Uh, like you, you were doing fine. You didn't, you're trying too hard. This is, this is what it means to be try hard. And I'm not referring to abattoir as being try hard. I'm re referring to the writers here. Um, Doug. You overdid it. But anyway, like, honestly, if you wanted to have him be reintroduced as sadistic and cruel and unhinged and that sort of thing, introduce him with the murder rather than fight than Asbat finding the aftermath. I understand that also you have to do then the, the, the playing part, but you can imply that that's what's going to happen or that something really bad is going to happen and then have Asbat reintroduced being on the case investigating and revealing that oh um that abattoir flayed him so in any case next time we're continuing the abattoir storyline with the reintroduction of another of one of the characters from bloodlines who we haven't gotten caught up with yet so look forward to that Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.